Here we have a full English, a popular meal served over here in the UK, also known as a traditional English breakfast. It will typically include sausage, bacon, fried egg, mushrooms, grilled tomato, beans, and toast to help mop it all up. Some people may also include black pudding. Not really my preference, but each to their own. This should then be accompanied by a hot beverage, such as a cup of tea, or a coffee to help wash it all down. The items of this dish work well together and can be eaten in various satisfying combinations, but they can also stand strong on their own merit and be consumed individually should the eater so please. The ingredients are also relatively cheap and so this enormous banquet of food can usually be sold off for a very reasonable price, making it one of the most popular dishes to be served in Britain. But it has also gained popularity abroad, making it amongst the most recognisable British dishes across the world. This is a full English. And this is full English. A show which was supposed to be the UK's version of Family Guy, set to become the national staple of UK animated sitcoms, rivaling the popularity of its American counterparts, not only to gain popularity in the UK, but also abroad. But unlike the full English breakfast, this full English was a monumental failure, plummeting in ratings as the season aired in the UK, so much so that the final episode never even got to air. None of the ingredients of this show were, and due to its shocking and grotesque nature, a lot of the content is hard to swallow, and instead of having a cup of tea to help wash it all down, you'd probably be better off with a cup of bleach instead. How dare this show use the name Full English to compare itself to our beloved national dish. It's like instead of being given the delicious breakfast I was anticipating, the waiter just came up and threw a shit ridden nappy right into my face, and I was expected to just sit there and laugh trying to wrap my tiny mind around the shocking and grotesque comedic genius that has just quite literally slapped me in the face. This show was so unpopular and has faded into so much obscurity that even googling full English cartoon won't bring it up on the search results and no streaming service seems to be showing them online. And so the only place I could find a DVD of this show was on Amazon. And unlike the delicious breakfast which for all of its content is sold relatively cheap, this embarrassment of a show is currently selling for £50. £50! Used! Plus the uh, £1.26 delivery. And this is the only DVD copy I was able to find. Did the show fail so bad that hardly any of these DVDs were made? Or is it like the E.T. fiasco where somewhere in the UK there's just a massive landfill of full English DVDs? Well, whatever the reason, this is the only price I could find, so I... Purchase the DVD. I imagine the seller couldn't believe their eyes when they woke up and received the notification that someone had actually bought this product. I'm honestly surprised that I didn't get an email afterwards warning me of what I had just done. Like, if you make a large purchase or unusual purchase from your bank, it will message you being like, did you mean to do this? Was this you? Or at the very least I should have been given a contract to sign, declaring that I'm mentally sane, I'm in control of my actions, and fully accept the consequences of what I'm about to do. But no, there wasn't. So now that I've placed what is probably the worst order of my life, I guess I now just have to sit here and wait for it to arrive. Whilst we wait, here's a quick shout out from today's sponsor. Manscaped recently hooked me up with a bunch of tools and formulations from their all-in-one performance package kit. 
Your balls will thank you? They sure did. Thank you, Steve. You're welcome, balls. Check out the new Lawnmower 3.0. A waterproof trimmer with advanced skin safe technology, reducing nicks and cuts, which is perfect for when I have to shave my cocoa. Nuts. Manscaped even created a ball deodorant called Crop Preserver, a ball toner spray. Ooh. This really is a game changer. Not forgetting the weed whacker for nose and ear hair, and also the Shears 2.0 for your toes and nails. And for a limited time, you'll also get these two free gifts the Shed Travel Bag and the Manscaped anti-shaving boxes. Ah. Just go to manscaped.com today where you can get 20% off plus free shipping when you use the promo code REVIEWS20, link in the description. Manscaped, your balls and body will thank you. Yay! Well, it seems the DVD still hasn't arrived. Even with the Amazon Prime, this delivery is going to take over a week to get to me probably because the seller is still trying to dig the DVD out of the landfill. Whilst I was waiting for my prized item to come through the post, I did scroll down through the Amazon reviews, and to my surprise there were actually quite a few positive ones. Love it! Was gutted to watch this show on catch up, only to find that it had been cancelled. If you like Family Guy but appreciate an English twist occasionally, then you may like this. It's ruder, and the characters need even more help. This is one of the funniest things I've seen in a long time. A must watch if you have a grade A British sense of humour. Spelt humour the American way. No. You. It was great. Bring it back. Happy to find this. Full English is the best adult cartoon that I have seen in a long time. Not for the kids, but great fun for adults. Very entertaining. Funny. A must watch. Quick delivery. Good price. Okay. Well, it seems that I may have been wrong about this show after all. Perhaps my memory was warped from when I was originally watching it back in 2012, and this show is actually an untapped mine of comedy gold and ingenious wit. Well, unfortunately, it seems that I may never find out, as over a week in and the DVD still hasn't arrived, and I kind of want this video to be out before next year, so it seems I will have to seek out this show through alternative sources in order to obtain some footage, which to my surprise, there is actually some out there. So bear in mind that throughout this video you may see some quality difference in the clips, as in the editing phase I will start off by using the alternative source clips, but will try to mix in as much DVD footage as I can whenever it arrives. But for now, let's grab a knife and fork, pour us a cup of bleach, and get stuck in. Full English is a British animated sitcom created by Jack Williams, Harry Williams, and Alex Scar. The series was produced by Two Brothers Pictures and was aired on Channel 4 through November and December of 2012. Remember when we all thought 2012 was meant to be the apocalypse year? Good times. The series comprised of six 20 minute episodes, although the final episode never actually aired as it was pulled for apparently being too controversial which, given the vile nature of this show, makes me wonder what atrocities this episode in particular did to get itself axed. But we'll look into that in further detail later on in this review. The series as a whole was meant to emulate the Family Guy vibe, only with a British setting and more British focused humour, which on paper, that actually sounds really good and is something that I would very much like. I mean, I do enjoy American animated sitcoms, but at times there are celebrities and pop culture references that I can't always recognise or relate to. So having that same type of adult satirical humour focused around British pop culture, politicians and celebrities would be a refreshing change. Yeah, a football and a football match. <laughs> Rooney like football. I mean, they spell mum with a U. They spell mum with a U. And to be fair to the show, it did kind of achieve that, kind of, but every time there would be a somewhat satirical and dare I say, even funny take on pop culture. It's a move and a moustache. 
I'm growing it throughout November to help the fight against prostate and testicular cancer. So those semi-pubescent hairs on your face are going to prevent a malignant growth in your balls? Yeah. There would also be some extreme gross out or try hard shock value thrown in. I tried last night with the mirror, father, but the hole's too small. Perhaps you could help? Son, I think we may have hit a new low. But first, let's take a look at the characters themselves. The setting takes place in a suburban town in England, where we focus on the lives of the Johnson family. First up, we have the dad, Edgar. He's a nerdy, hard-working guy who has a very cynical take on the world. He works at a company which is owned by his father-in-law, who doesn't really like Edgar all too much. Undermining me in front of my son, eh? Classic Ken. Lovely. So will often attempt to make his life miserable. Edgar isn't without his flaws, however, as he is shown to be cowardly at times and often expresses his sexual frustration. We came to tell you we're not dead. Still horny, but not dead. Edgar is probably the most likeable of all the family members, most likely to the fact that he is voiced by the brilliant Richard Ayawodi, who I absolutely love from the IT crowd. I want to go back to being weird. I like being weird. Weird's all I've got. That and a sweet style. Next we have the mum, Wendy. There's not really much to say about the character, other than she's your typical housewife. She stays at home, often acts as the more sensible and level-headed one, and though not hating her life, does often feel underappreciated. No balls! Again, not really a bad character, but not really a standout one either. She's just there and fine. Which is more than what I can say for the next one. Dusty, the eldest son. Dusty is pretty much the Chris Griffin of the family. He's fat, lazy, and stupid. But where someone like Chris Griffin's stupidity can come across as funny and even charming in places, Dusty's just comes across as far too exaggerated and annoying. And this really isn't helped by the fact that he has a loud, high-pitched, lisping voice. Fighting Joe Hooker, the American Union Army officer defeated by Robert E. Lee at Chancellorville. Which I guess is meant to be due to his braces? but it just makes listening to the character feel incredibly unpleasant. Reminds me of that incredibly annoying character from The Kids Next Door. Thanks again for saving my life, Kids Next Door. Next we have Jason, the middle child. Like the mum, there's really not much to say about this character. Like Dusty, Jason also comes across as dim-witted, though not quite as bad. He also doesn't possess an irritating voice like Dusty. Mother and father. By now you've probably realised I've gone. I've become a traveller in Thailand, seeing things no white teenager has ever seen before. Which is funny considering they're both voiced by the same person. Jason seems to be sportier and more outgoing, though this is rarely shown in the series. What makes his character a bit more likeable though, is that he seems to have a kind heart and is the most caring out of the three kids. And unlike Dusty, his stupidity is at the right level, where it can still offer some charm in places. Dad said I was the man of the house now. That means I'm him. So you and I have to have the same relationship you and he do. Fuck off and don't talk to me. That sounds about right. What absolutely lacks any charm, however, is Evelyn, the young daughter. That's a shit name. Let's call her Gloria. Whereas Dusty is the exaggerated version of Chris Griffin, Evelyn is the exaggerated version of Meg Griffin. She's fat, emo, and horny. But these personality traits will vary in strength, episode by episode, depending on what the script needs from her. For example, in episode 1 we focus on her emo personality as she tries to enter her punk band into Britain's Got Talent. Throughout the episode, Evelyn is shown to have a very negative and cynical take on the world, making her seem almost the intelligent one of the family. But then in episode 3 of the show, it seems to ditch this personality altogether and instead focus solely on the aspect that she's fat, where her cynical attitude is gone and she's dumbed down to the point of becoming a food zombie and ends up diving into a vat of chocolate or Gus's gloop style. But what hurts her character the most is just how unnecessarily spiteful she is to the rest of her family. Which, I get, she's meant to be the angsty rebellious teen, but the show also wants us to feel sorry for her when things don't go her way. And you just can't. Sorry Evelyn, 
You're a fat, spiteful cow, and I just want you to die. No! Last in the family, we have Ken, who is Wendy's father. Ken is an egotistical, sexist, racist, former Nazi? Self-made millionaire, who is the owner of his company, Sweet Lavender. He's pretty much the same character as Carl Pewdersmith from Family Guy, in that he doesn't care for others, loves to rejectify women, and absolutely hates his son-in-law, but still shows love and care towards his daughter. Have a wonderful time, darling. You, not so much. Ken is probably the most unique of the cast, however, as he also possesses an imaginary friend. Can we have playtime, please? Which leads me to my most hated character of the show, Squidge. No! Fucking Squidge. This giant, green, obnoxious twat of a character is Ken's imaginary friend that he's had since a child. Not only does he have this really stupid looking design, but he also has what is the worst voice in the show. Playtime? Which is really saying something. I guess his squeaky childlike voice is supposed to add to the comedy that he likes to get up to adult stuff. Let's go to a strip club. I wanna see some tattoos. But it really doesn't work. It comes across as two in your face and represents forks being scraped down a plate. Don't make me angry, Ken! I suppose it's actually quite fitting that he's voiced by the same guy who also voices Dusty. The problem with Squidge is that he really doesn't serve any purpose to the show other than to look and sound silly. Perhaps he could have worked as a simple one-off joke to show that the stuck-up Ken is actually an insane man-child? but they try to justify his existence in the show by having an entire episode dedicated to him, where Ken goes to therapy to get rid of Squidge and actually succeeds. But we cut 30 years into the future where Ken states that he's miserable without Squidge, and so Jamie Oliver intervenes with the timeline and tells Ken not to go to therapy, meaning that Squidge gets to stay. Oh, by the way, Ken, don't see that therapist anymore, yeah? Or you won't see Squidge again. Thanks, Jamie. Another reason not to like you. The problem is that we're never actually shown how or why Ken is miserable without Squidge. I mean, Ken seems pretty sorted with his Playboy lifestyle. Doesn't seem like he really needs Squidge around. A much better example of how this should have been done is in Ed, Ed and Eddie where one of the characters named Johnny carries around an imaginary friend named Plank. In one episode, Johnny is dared not to interact with Plank for the day, and the whole experience turns Johnny insane, as he is unable to think for himself and needs Plank there to give him orders and direction in life. And this concept works because we see this behaviour throughout the series. But I think the biggest problem for the show overall is that it's just not very funny. Much of the humour is supposed to come from the vulgar and controversial nature of the show, but it just comes across as forced and out of place. And that gets in the way of what could have actually been an okay joke. Take episode 4 for example. We have Jason and Eve trying to study for a school test, when suddenly celebrity chef Jamie Oliver turns up in a Doctor Who style phone booth and offers to take the kids through time to learn about history. The kids aren't too interested in Jamie's offer, and Jamie responds in this way. I've got a recipe that'll get you in here. It's called shooting your fucking heads off. Now let me help you help yourselves. This is meant to be a play on Jamie Oliver's school dinners, where he would turn up to schools to make the lunch menu healthier for kids, say that they need his help. But the funny thing was that the kids hated the new menu and didn't want him there at all. So a joke like this is actually a good mockery of his character and egotistical nature. But then they just have him become a pervert as he goes through history watching various people have sex. Which, okay, yeah, a bit shocking. But as far as I'm aware, Jamie was never known for being a sex pest on TV. So this character mocking no longer works. And unless you're below the age of 10, the shock value of this isn't really going to do much in the long run. But hey, all this controversy and shock value must have been appreciated by someone because it managed to get an episode banned from airing. Apparently certain aspects of this episode were considered too offensive 
even by Channel 4 standards. Originally the episode was scheduled to be released as episode 4, but Channel 4 was concerned that it might cause offence, so pushed it back to the final episode so they could have a bit more time to decide on it. And when the final episode date of December 17th came round, they decided not to go ahead. Back in 2012, I didn't realise an episode was pulled at all, nor did I really care. But when I found out upon researching, I was genuinely curious as to what could have been so bad that it needed to be pulled, considering everything else that had made it through the show uncensored. Well, I popped in the DVD, watched the never before seen episode to find that there was really nothing special about it. The episode was titled My Big Fat Gypsy Nightmare and focuses around Evelyn as she decides to marry a gypsy boy to rebel against their parents, whilst the B-plot centres around the parents trying to complete an old bucket list they had to see if they're still young at heart. And that's it. I couldn't really see what the big controversy could have been. Sure there were some scenes of nudity and a bit of drug taking, but that's been featured in previous episodes without any issue. My suspicion would be that the ban was due to the whole plot revolving around the Gypsy Wedding, which is meant to be a parody of the popular Channel 4 program at the time, My Big Fat Gypsy Wedding. I can only assume that the heads of Channel 4 were a bit worried that an episode mocking gypsies would cause some offence, and they didn't want to risk it considering the profitable gypsy themed programs that they had airing at the time. So when they delayed the episode and saw how quick the ratings were dropping, it probably didn't seem worth the risk airing the episode after all. Which yeah, I can understand from a business perspective, but from a moral one, it does seem a bit hypocritical that they would worry about causing offence, considering how offensive the rest of the show is. And that's pretty much full English, a show which seemed like it could have had great potential, but tripped on the starting line. I think that's what makes me the most distraught about this show. Not what it was, but what it could have been. Having a British themed animated sitcom would have been a refreshing change, offering satirical comedy that was much more close to home. And there are elements of that in this show, moments which are passable and dare I even say, got a laugh out of me. I'm Ewan McGregor, and once more I'm using my powers of celebrity to change the world, and I'm appearing in black and white to show how serious I really am. The Bilton's Got Talent piss take which mocked at how the show became more about selling a sob story than presenting actual talent is genuinely well done. It's really good I can tell, yeah throw. You didn't expect that now did you? You just didn't expect that did you? Did you? No. I liked how the show took the mick out of your typical posh gap year students preaching about how caring and woke they are. Now, until you've travelled to at least three really poor countries, lived like a king for no money and talked exclusively to other overprivileged white people you know from school, you just don't know, man. And there are some genuinely funny jokes here and there. But you know me only as... Squirrel Man! Take my nuts! <laughs> and I gotta say, though nothing spectacular, I do think the animation is alright. It doesn't look visually displeasing, it's pretty typically animated, and it's from the same animation studio that did The Simpsons and Futurama. But unfortunately, it just wasn't enough. Maybe it's one of those situations where the writers just had too much creative freedom, and so went way too overboard with the shock and gross out, like how with Ren and Stimpy when they went to Adult Swim. Sometimes, perhaps it's best just to have that regulator there, telling you to dial it back a bit and force you to think of better jokes that don't rely on mere shock value. Maybe in the future, another network will have the balls to revamp this idea of a British animated sitcom, and look back upon this show, both as a warning, but perhaps inspiration, where they managed to take the scattered ingredients that made this show good, put them together on a plate, and maybe, just maybe, we'll finally get the full English that we deserve.